May the name of the Lord be glorified. Uh, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to stand before you all and uh, take a few minutes to share a couple of things that I learned too from the Word of God. Uh, I know Glenn was worried about going over time. I wasn't wor I'm not worried about that at all. <laughs> um, and conveniently enough, this afternoon I happened to lose all the notes that I prepared for. Uh, <laughs> so I scrambled for everything that I remembered that I prepared and I prepared uh, again uh, what I could recall. Um, what I did want to discuss, uh, what, I, what I did want to share with you this evening is very closely related to what Glenn was speaking as well, um, and it's about crucifying the flesh. Um, I'm just going to go very briefly over a couple of verses that's going to guide you to uh, show what the scripture says about crucifying the flesh, what does that mean to us, what we are expected, and why Paul uses the term crucify um, in the epistles. Uh, so, to start off to say, what does crucifying the flesh mean? Let's read Galatians chapter 5 and verses 24. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24 says, And those who belong to G Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. There are two things that are uh, brought up over here, and that is putting to death the desires of the flesh and the passion. Now, what are the works of the flesh are mentioned in the verses just preceding uh, verses uh, 24, verses 19 to 21. It describes, Paul describes all the ways, uh, all the works of the flesh and what we are expected to put to death. Now, I went through to understand uh, the definition of crucifixion now it's very common it's very we all know what the meaning of crucifixion is but we don't see that form of punishment um i don't think it's practiced anywhere in the world today but at the time um, um 2000 years ago and in some civilizations uh, it was the most humiliating and uh disrespectful way to uh to kill someone and to uh, show that they, are, they have absolutely no value. And I, I tried to ponder upon why Paul would use the same term uh, for the word flesh uh, when he says crucify the flesh. And it's, it's because we ought to have the same approach that uh, to flesh just how the Jews and the people of the world at the time had towards Jesus when they shouted to him, crucify. Now, uh, let's read a couple of verses that it show that uh, go through what, cruci what crucifying the flesh means. Um, let's read Romans chapter, Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. Just going to take you to two verses. Just to, just, there are various verses in scripture, but I'm just going to take you only to two of them. Romans chapter 6 and verse 6 says, We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. One of the meanings of crucifying to the flesh means that we are no longer in any form enslaved to sin. And instead, what we are expected to do is, uh, says in Galatians chapter 5 and 13, it says that we are called to liberty, we are called to freedom. And this, this freedom is not to live in the flesh, it's not to go back to the ways, our old ways, but to walk in the spirit and it goes through the uh, fruits of the spirit and how we ought to be um, uh, living. Now, Another thing that I, uh, when we think about crucifixion and Christ being on the cross, was the way how he was treated, uh, starved, humiliated, and it's just the way how we ought to treat the desires of our flesh as well. Um, anything that we feed, it grows. So if you keep uh, feeding the desires of your flesh, and if, you, if that's what you are feeding yourselves all day, 
that is obviously what's going to win. Um, but if you uh, ponder upon the word of God, pray and ground yourself in Christ, that obviously would uh, take precedence over the flesh. Now, one, uh, one other thing that I did want to bring up was how closely crucifixion is, um, can be compared to obedience. And that's only because um, we know Christ, uh, the crucifixion of Christ is one of the greatest form, form of obedience that Christ did. Um, and I'm just going to go to the same words which uh, Glenn had taken up, Romans chapter 12 and verses 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your, which is your spiritual worship. And this is one of the biggest form of obedience as a believer that uh, we are expected to do. Um, before I uh, conclude my very short message, um, what I'd like to uh, put in your hearts and mind is that uh, the the app, the approach which the world had towards Jesus when they were trying to crucify him, they are trying to humiliate him. That is the same way how we ought to crucify the flesh and the desires of the flesh. Uh, Paul, just like how Paul writes uh, uh, in the uh, Paul writes, we ought to uh, bring it into our lives and think. Uh, in the same way as to crucify all the desires of the flesh and passions of this world. May the small thought encourage all of you, and may the name of the Lord be glorified.